We're honored to be joined by Patricia Morgan, who is executive director of Jersey Can. Good to see you, Patricia. You too, Steve. Tell everyone what Jersey Can is all about and why it matters. Jersey Can is an advocacy organization. We engage in research and policy to be able to help improve educational outcomes for all of New Jersey students. So, Patricia, there are several reports, a couple of reports that your organization has done that deals with, quote unquote, learning loss in our schools with children, uh, students in school, particularly related to COVID. Talk about it and its disproportionate impact uh, on communities of color. Absolutely. So Jersey Can, together with the New Jersey Children's Foundation, commissioned a report to look at the impact of COVID-19 on student learning throughout the pandemic. We focused in on the first half of this school year, and we used real student test scores using real New Jersey students in grades three through eight. And what we found is that in the first half of the school year, students did not meet their expected growth targets. And so on average, we had students experiencing 30% of learning loss in English language arts mm -hmm. and 36% of learning loss in math. But what we found is that this learning loss was not the same for all of our students. So our black students lost 43% of learning in ELA and nearly 50% in- ELA math. is English? Correct, correct, English language arts. And I, the second statistic, 50% of black students had uh, learning loss in math. So they, they, they lost 50% of their learning. So they, so if we look at the first half of the school year, 50% of their learning was not met. So this is particularly troubling, Steve, because we know that as a state, we have longstanding persistent achievement gaps, which means that we already have certain student groups that traditionally are further behind than other students. And generally our black students are already further behind their peers. And so this means that we are pushing them even further back than their peers. You know, Patricia, we had a group of, of really top educators on, and most of them believe there was not this degree of learning loss. Is it a matter of perception? We know that there has been very deep learning loss across the state. The question is what we're going to do about it. That are is the question. Going, are we going to keep using data and the resources we have to identify where each student is and to think critically about what the solutions are? For some students, they may just be off grade level by a little bit, and they may benefit from something like high dosage tutoring. But then for other students who are further behind, we may need to think about other options that we haven't thought about before. Such parents, as? Parents may think about retention. They may also think about summer learning. Hold on, Patricia, go back. The term retention means different things to different people. What do you mean? What I mean is that for a parent who decides that maybe their student needs some additional time with either grade level content or may need some additional time to readjust to the school building, perhaps they stay in the same grade that they've been in throughout this last academic year. Really? First, by the, by the way, we're taping in the middle of May. This will be seen after. I'm curious about this. What are the potential implications of parents making decisions for their children to have that child repeat a certain grade. There are implications socially, emotionally, academically, et cetera. Talk about that. We think that parents really have been in their students' classrooms throughout the entire year. And each home life is different, right? So parents know best where they think their child should be over the next year. And so they should actively have a conversation with their school to see, okay, where is my student? And what is the solution for getting my student back on track? So like I said, there may be students where something like high dosage tutoring is really successful. And then there may be other students who need additional supports and in more intensive services, perhaps some summer learning over the summer to help get them back up to speed or to jumpstart the school year next year. By the way, what's a lighthouse district? 
a lighthouse district is a district that has previously used data from statewide assessments to close achievement gaps for their students. And so lighthouse districts are really beacons that we should be looking to as a state. These are districts who previously have closed gaps. And so we should be looking to them saying, what have you done in the past? In addition mm -hmm. to the lighthouse districts, we know that charter schools have been doing incredible work over the last two decades to help close achievement gaps for students. We should be learning from them and seeing if there are some of their best practices that we could be utilizing as well. By the way, Patricia, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, two things. Number one, I'm gonna ask you about student navigators in a second, but as it relates to charter schools, there's a major, there are two cases going before the state Supreme Court as it relates to charter schools and their expansion or not. We're gonna be doing extensive segments on the policy educational, fiscal, social, emotional. Uh, and by the way, those cases are being brought around segregation of students and around race. It's complicated stuff, but you mentioned charter schools that triggered for me. Real quick, what are student navigators? Student navigators are individuals in a school building who are assigned to a student and family to help support that student and family socially and emotionally and with any services that the family might need. What's unique about navigators is that these are individuals who are other than the classroom teacher. And the idea here is to let the classroom teacher really focus on the academics with students and let this other individual focus on the social and emotional health of students and families and identifying the supports that the family might need for their student to be successful. Patricia, got a little less than a minute left. Role of state and federal government here. The federal government has, um, they have really pushed out three significant spending plans. The most recent spending plan, we're gonna see $2.8 billion come to New Jersey. And so now it's really up to our state officials as well as our local school districts. Almost 90% of those dollars are going to our local school districts. So it's up to our local school boards and parents and families and community members to have a real robust conversation about how those dollars should be spent. Patricia, make sure we continue this conversation because this student, a gap around learning is a massive issue for every parent, for every child, for the state of New Jersey and for the nation. Patricia Morgan is executive director of Jersey Ken. I wanna thank you so much for joining us, Patricia. Thank you. I'm Steve Adubato, stay with us, we'll be right back.